I would like to welcome all of you, uh, those of you who are here in Ultuna, in the room uh, conveniently called Framtiden, the future. And all of you joining from Almarp and Umeå and Skara and wherever you have placed your laptop today to the second open lunch lecture in uh, Framtids Labets lecture series. And before I give the floor to Tobias Valla, I just want to say a few words about Framtids Labet. Framtids Labet, or the Futures Lab, is a new initiative at SLU. It's developed and run by two of the future platforms, SLU Urban Futures, which focus on urban sustainability in a very broad sense, and SLU Future Food, that focuses on a sustainable food system, also in a very broad sense. And the idea of the future lab, Framtids Labet, is to explore future challenges that could be relevant to explore in research or education or collaboration, all, or all three of these activities. And with that said, I am very happy to have Tobias Valla with us today. Tobias comes from the Swedish Energy Agency and will present one of the most radical and interesting future studies projects that the Swedish Energy Agency has ever engaged in. Oh. No pressure, Tobias. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, thank you for inviting me here. And my name is Tobias Valla and I have been at the Swedish Energy Agency for the last seven years. And I am at the Research and Innovation Department. And I normally work with the research funding. But I have also been involved in a couple of projects on uh, scenarios and strategies for, for the last a couple of times. Uh, so between 2014 and, two, and 16, I p participated in a future study that was called Fyra Framtider, or Four Futures. And I have, the, I have gave s some of the reports to Josephine, so if you are inter interested, you can look on them afterwards. And today I will try to give an overview on what the scenarios did look like and also the method that led to the up to them. Also, I would describe some of the activities that are going on for the moment. And for futures was performed because the Swedish energy was and still is changing very fast. So, uh, when we started the work, there were defined goals and framework up until 2020. But after 2020, what might happen politically was less clear. Uh, and what will affect the structure of the energy system then? In four futures, we see that energy is not an isolated issue. Uh, it, uh, society's development affects the development of the energy system. How we live, where we live, how we do the transport, where the uh, industries are, and how do they uh, solve the transport needs of the goods. And also, the world around us also affects the development of the Swedish Energy Agency, of course. And we looked at accepted external factors known as megatrends. Uh, and some examples on megatrends are uh, like uh, the digitalization, more circle, circular economy, uh, and also the, the climate change. But there are also less certain external factors known as game changers uh, that could affect the development of the Swedish energy system. And it is a little more difficult to predict whether the, this will occur, but what is certain is that some of the game changers will occur. Some historic game changers that changed the condition for the global energy debate 
was the election of Trump and also the Fukushima nuclear power plant uh, accident. And who knows uh, what game changers will come in the future. For example, right now we have the corona virus and we see that it affects the uh, global travel patterns and uh, maybe we will try to learn to have better uh, online meetings instead of taking the plane. And then we can see this as a practice round to, to stop flying so much. And okay, now we have the society's society <coughs> development and also our external factors uh, to take into the future. We then proceeded from the energy debate and listened to the, what the priorities the, are for the role of energy in the Swedish energy debate. So we selected some of these, uh, those priorities and uh, grouped them into our scenarios. And the priorities we choose, chose were competitiveness for today's industry and secure supply of energy and the indiv individual and consumer at the center, uh, ecological sustainability and global justice, uh, industry and commerce of the future, and also focus on the climate. So these were the, the common priorities that we uh, captured from the energy debate. And the way we then grouped them into four scenarios are shown here. Uh, and this can, of course, be done in many different ways, but we choose this way. And then we took the names from the world of music. So one scenario was forte, legato, espressivo, and vivace. And I start with forte. And uh, forte means uh, forceful or powerful. In forte, energy is like a fuel for growth and well-being. And the focus on, of energy policy is on secure supply of energy at low and stable price. Uh, and efficient transport of industrial goods. In order to address tougher international competition, energy policy is focused on subs subsidizing energy for industry and not setting strict uh, requirements uh, for the industry. So the climate improvements in this scenario are done in other sectors, such as buildings and personal transport. And planning for society is based on ind industry's need to establish infrastructure and the state invests in electric roads as a way of making climate improvements in transport and making goods uh, traffic in industry more efficient. And this is a Sankey diagram. Uh, that on the left hand side it's a supply and then it's a use. And the energy system in, in Forte use appro approximately about the same amount of energy as in Sweden today, but the industry use more electricity, bioenergy and raw materials. And the lifespan of existing nuclear power plants is used as long as possible. And the state also subsidizes on a new nuclear power plant program uh, which means that three more generation three reactors are built up until 2035. And Sweden also invests heavily in research on, uh, 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 on nuclear power. So in the future, in like 2050, there are three more reactors and now they are gener generation four. And the existing hydropower remains and also a f uh, further a large river one more is developed to increase the capacity but uh, unsure wind 
uh, onshore wind power is not developed any further, but is replaced by uh, the nuclear power uh, uh, at the end of the life cycle. And in Fort, uh, no great investments are made on solar power, but there are enthusiasts who develop it on a smaller scale. And the next one is legato, maybe like the opposite. Uh, and legato means tied together. And here the focus is on energy policy, on ecological uh, sustainability and global justice. And Sweden will be a pioneering country and reduce its ec ecological footprint. The focus is on circular business models, efficient use of resources, and recycling. And Sweden has strict national requirements for emissions and will have a fossil-free vehicle fleet by 2030 and a totally renewable energy system by 2035. And the strict emission uh, requirements are and phasing out of fossil fuels means that some industries reorganize while other close down their activities uh, or move abroad to where the requirements seem different and also in legato we see a new kind of spe special planning for society with more uh, integrated social functions between home work and services uh, and Sweden's 10 lar largest cities are car-free, and there's a focus on public transport and cycling. Uh, and as an exam example of technology that is used in Legato, instead of going on a v vacation abroad to, to, the, uh, like to see the sun, you put the virtual reality helmet on, simulating a beach, in uh, maybe some nice place, and then walking barefoot in the in the sandbox. So that that is how the vacation is done in Legato. Uh, Sweden closes down uh, the existing nuclear power early, and instead there is major development on onshore wind power. And uh, 2050, about 70 terawatt hours of electricity is produced from onshore wind power, and mainly from large-scale wind farms. And a number of large solar power plants are also built, and solar power delivers m maybe about 50 times more energy than today. And with the focus on ele ec ecological sustainability, all small water streams are protected with no power plants, but the big ones are still there. And then Espresivo, that's the third uh, scenario, and uh, that means uh, expressive. So in uh, Espresivo, the focus in on, is on diversity and in individual solutions. Many private individuals, companies and industries choose to find their own solution for covering their energy needs. And crowdfunding and crowdsourcing dominates research and innovation so as to enable companies and individuals to finance the solutions they, they believe in. And the aim of energy policy is here to uh, uh, to allow as many different solutions as possible to exist on the market. So you can say that everyone should be able to choose their own option. And many choose to buy maybe transport services as a service instead of owning their own car, uh, or else they replace the car with a small electric car, maybe. The indus industries that have chosen to produce their own electricity may have joined together to invest in battery capacity or supply the excess uh, energy to an electric road, maybe, or to charge electric vehicles to transport the goods. 
new types of market arising, including new electricity markets with many stakeholders, both big and small markets, lots of local energy systems. And as a result of all the individual uh, solutions, the energy system is sprawling and diverse with many different types of uh, production. Uh, electricity production is mainly small scale and decentralized, largely solar power, which is integrated into roofs and facades of building and even into infrastructure. And solar power provides 30 terawatt hours of electricity by 2050. And also we have solar heating, small scale hydropower, existing large scale hydropower, wind power, both onshore and offshore. And you see that's a small nuclear power here. And uh, in this scenario, it, that is like small scale nuclear power that can also be fit in your basement if you would like, because you know, this is a individual. <laughs> you can choose what you want. And Vivace, the final. In uh, Vivace, that means lively. And Vivace, in <clears throat> the energy is a springboard for growth uh, in, uh, within the climate terms. And the state and industry invest in reorganize, uh, reorganization into bio industry and green technology. There is large-scale investment in research and innovation to promote a fossil-free Sweden and to produce solutions to export into other countries as well. And the state also invests heavily on, uh, in infrastructures to in ensure the climate-friendly transport of people and goods into Europe, high, like high-speed trains, maybe vacuum, vacuum trains also, to transport both people and goods. And that means a general movement from roads to rail in this scenario. Uh, by 2050, the transport sector is fossil-free, and the change has been made with more public transport, electric vehicles, and new railways, and a number of electric roads in Sweden. And also in... Vivace, the planning for society is very high-tech, and the technology ensures that people and companies are climate smart. Uh, there are separate roads for uh, uh, cycles, car, uh, public transport in cities, uh, and uh, by 2050 there is a zero emission requirement for all vehicles in both towns and in the countryside. So uh, there are lots of smart homes that, are, uh, that help people to optimize the energy consumption, for example, ensuring that the electric uh, uh, consumption is used at times when you have the energy supply uh, in, uh, when the energy supply is plentiful. So the industry uses more energy than today in Vivace, while uh, buildings and homes have been made much more energy efficient. And electricity is mainly produced from biopower and, and onshore and offshore wind power. So existing nuclear power plants are used until the end of the lifespan, and they are not replaced in this scenario. Instead, there is a great deal of re research into renewable technologies and green tech that can also be exported. And also in this scenario, we, we are developing like ocean energy, wave power, and ocean current power in order to export it. So this was uh, four scenarios. And uh, then the Swedish Energy Agency used two different models to simulate the energy and electricity systems in our futures. And according to our models, all our scenarios are equally able to provide electricity. And in terms of average annual value, the cost to the end customer is also similar. And all four 
of our scenarios provide climate improvements and reduce fossil dependencies compared to today. But when we look into the 1.5 degree target, we found that only two of the scenarios will fix the targets, and that is Vivace and Legato. And it is Legato that does this best. And how we build the new homes and reorganizing industry into a fossil-free transport sector are the greatest, uh, of the greatest importance for meeting the climate target. So here are some conclusions then. Uh, the policies and governing instruments are really needed. We see that our, in our model simulation that to achieve our four different futures, we will require an active policy and new governing instruments and law, laws. So the, also the transport sector gains, uh, the, it's more connected uh, strongly to the rest of the energy system. And through the electrification of the transport sector, where a surplus of, can charge your car and where bioenergy replaces fossil fuels, the transport system becomes even more integrated with the other energy systems. The same applies to buildings, uh, which in several of our future can produce electricity and act as heat storage and also provide surplus heat to the energy system. And also in several of our scenarios, the proportion of electricity increases, and the change happens in many sectors. Uh, and the last conclusion here is that at least seven of the UN's uh, global sustainability development goals are directly connected with the development of energy system. And others are even more directly interlinked. So 2030, in order to, uh, it's not so far off. So in order to meet the development targets, the change to the to sustainable system must happen very, very fast. So now we reach the next step of this uh, presentation, and I will dive into how this was uh, conducted. But, but first, we can just make a, a check with you guys here. Uh, w which one of the scenarios did you like most and would like to live in? We, we can have a raise of hands. Uh, does anyone think uh, Forte is a good option? What do you mean with good? Uh, <laughs> it's a very realistic option. I think. Yeah, is it? Good? I don't know. But now, yeah, wh wh where do you want to live? No one for Forte. Then Legato. It was uh, tied together with the uh, uh, focus on global justice. Yeah. And then uh, we have uh, Espresivo, where you can choose. Yeah, one, <laughs> yeah, two, three, yeah, <laughs> and then we watch the tech technology optimistic one. Yeah, some here. <laughs> yeah, as you see, it's it's spread out a little, and but I think also one main conclusion is that the future will be formed by all the different options and be a mix. And I will come back to that also. So I will uh, look on the method that we used. So uh, explorative scenarios was chosen as the main method. And I will come back to that. Uh, and also we had some different stages of the project. First we have a pre-study that was very broad. It was maybe uh, 40 people on the Swedish Energy Agency that was involved in different subgroups. But then when starting the scenario study project, the conclusion, was, the learnings was that to form a smaller group 
with maybe seven to ten people and to have more time on each member because we figured out that that was the best way. And also in order to verify the uh, scenarios, we used uh, model simulations, but that was not in focus in this. It, the focus was on developing the good different scenarios and uh, try to find the conditions that make them interesting. But the model simulations also was also done to f like fill the scenarios with good uh, uh, more understanding on how yeah uh, if uh, if it's actually able to make that kind of uh, energy mix for example uh, also we had a reference group that was very active and that consisted of Lars Ingelstam that had been working lots with future studies. Björn Sandén from Chalmers and uh, Bengt Johansson from FUI. So it was very good to have this kind of people uh, following the work quite closely. And we also have some cons consultancy help from EVL as a like, process uh, development uh, consult. Uh, also, we used storytelling as a method. Uh, actually, we maybe f the first half of the project was only focusing on bringing the narratives uh, and try to make them as good as possible. Uh, and then after that, we went into a more detailed phase. So f the first stage was more into finding a good four different uh, scenarios that was suitable for what we were doing. And a little more on information on how the scenarios were formed. There are three different ways of making scenarios. You can make a pred predictive one, and that is uh, the, like the weather forecast, and that answers the question, what will happen? Yeah, and these kind of scenarios may becomes more and more difficult the longer in the future you are looking. And then there are the explorative scenarios that tries to answer the quest question what can happen. And then finally the, the normative scenarios that tries to answer how do we reach a certain goal. And you can also call them uh, like goal-seeking scenarios. But we then choose the explorative. Uh, and the number of scenarios, you, if you, the future is in like, you can say if, if it's like in a, 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 an area here, the, the real future will happen in some place, but if you only pick one scenario, the, there's good possibility that you will not be anywhere close to the real future. So that is uh, why it's better to have many. And then when you're uh, choosing the different scenarios, maybe one of the most common tec technique or method is to use a four-field matrix where you have two different uh, dimensions. But in this scenario, the purpose of the study was to find explorative scenarios that could widen the energy debate. So the four-field matrix method became too restrictive. And instead, each scenario approach had to work on its own and the role of energy. So the role of energy became the distinguishing factor between the scenarios as well as having significance in the naming. So we based the different scenarios on what, how do the uh, pol politics and the decision makers see the energy in, as a role in the society. And here I only show one 
picture from the report with the six different dimensions. And the main priority here is what, what really is the key in the scenarios. So in Forte, the energy works as a fuel for growth. And in Legato, you see energy as a globally limited resource to be justly shared. And in Espresivo, you see energy as a means to express yourself. And in Vivace, the, you see energy as like a, a trampoline for growth and terms and uh, dictated by the climate also. So in Vivace, it, you can see it like an enabler to, the, to some other kind of development. And then we had the scenario names. And I can uh, reveal that I was the reason Ida knows that uh, I play the violin. So uh, I have been playing almost all my life. So I, this is natural to me to describe things in terms of music. Uh, and also in the, this way, if, if you find a name for a scenario that automatically gives the reader a bad or a good uh, feeling, then it's not good because the name needs to be like n neutral. And uh, forte, legato, espressivo and vivace, they are terms like describing how the music should, uh, should be performed. So in this case, they express how the role of energy is supposed to form the politics. And also one nice thing is when we, uh, when we presented the study in Almedalen, I had the opportunity to play the, <laughs> the scenario study together with a friend. So it was a little uh, not so common to, to play a scenario study. <laughs> Unfortunately, I didn't bring the violin today, but, but you can look it up on the internet. <laughs> so, as I told you before, the, uh, the modeling was not in focus, but we, in the end, we, we needed to have some results on how can you see the scenarios from different per perspectives, from un environmental, from energy system perspective and from uh, uh, like what happens in the uh, in the glo on the global picture so we did four types of analysis like energy system modeling i have been mentioning that already and then environmental assessment some kind of cost analysis and also sensitivity analysis the sensitivity analysis, it was basically bringing all the um, most critical external factors that can happen and see if it strengthens or weakens the four different scenarios. Uh, and in that way, you can see if it's a robust scenario according to what happens in the like, globally. So now I have been diving into the method, but this was uh, finalized that, uh, in 2016 and 2017, so it has some years uh, be, since it ended. And since then we have not been just sitting, we have been doing other stuff as well, so we have been doing more scenario studies of course uh, and I have been I have not been as involved in this as in the for future but we have one uh, report 100% uh, renewable and you can say that that is a normative scenario that uh, tries to fulfill the renewable goal on 100% renewable electricity 
And then just last year, we had a small scenario study on uh, what will happen the next 10 years on electrification and how will that impact the different regions of Sweden. And also, since 2016, we had the rise and fall of Energiöverenskommelsen. That is uh, maybe uh, the main structure for bringing the politics to, an, to the same... Uh, uh, yeah, to, to form the policies on, on, on what the energy will look like in the future. So maybe two years ago, it felt like we were quite sure on the politics, but right now, it's still, it's again up for discussion, I think. Uh, and also with that, we had the nuclear power, uh, and actually the nu two nuclear power plants that are now closing, uh, they were maybe closing a little before than we thought in the when back then, but now we have discussion again, and we have some pol political parties that want to have more research and development on next generation nuclear, for example. So that that is uh, something new in the debate. Also, one thing that was not at all mentioned in the report as a capacity shortage in the electricity grids. Uh, and that is maybe one of the biggest topics right now in the energy debate. Uh, and actually Uppsala is one of the uh, regions where the challenges are most uh, immediate. Uh, like right now we need to find a solution. And the main reason behind this shortage is uh, that the grid owners uh, did not buy enough new grids. Uh, for a very long time we have been having a de declining electricity use, but uh, due to the urbanization we have been having lots of more electricity in the cities and uh, then just uh, the transmission grid was full and from that we needed to look again on how to solve this and also St Stockholm and Malmö are also regions with challenges and also you see that energy transition and electrification is an enabler for the climate transition and now more than ever before the industry is looking into uh, like the taking away all fossil fuels and one of the big option here is to to use electricity in a, in a way to reduce the fossil fuel usage in the industry and uh, there are some large scale industrial projects going on right now with hybrid where you are making the steel with no coal uh, and uh, Northvolt when you are making batteries in the north of Sweden, and Semcero that's in the cement industry. And they also try to reduce uh, fossils to zero. So this was not on the table four years ago. And also we have had uh, some development on the local energy systems. And uh, how to build a resilient and sustainable system where with both like small systems and the big one. And this was also quite new. And uh, the recent, the previous like four years, we have had lots of different uh, pilot studies and uh, also some demonstrations on this, like in Gothenburg, for example. But I think it's still not obvious which one of the four future that will dominate in the in the future. So we are still seeing signs from each of the four futures. So I 
Oh, and right now I, I will just show you something about the capacity challenge because it, it has been really evolved during the last uh, years. Uh, and mainly, as I see it, it's uh, the main challenges are maybe these four, and it's uh, the cap capacity limitations in national and regional grids. And that can, of course, limit the regional growth. And are we willing to wait until the grid catch up? So we will need new market design and new roles and new innovation. And then we have seen that the wind power is coming maybe very much faster than we thought maybe four years ago. And in the coming three, three years, it will really be a massive deployment of wind power. And uh, according to some studies, it's an even bigger challenge in system balancing in the electricity grid to, ch to balance between weeks, because you can have one week with almost no wind and then one week with lots of wind. So you, most balancing services maybe works on shorter or longer terms. So this, the new thing in here is the, the time scale. So maybe we will need more to curtail to, like waste some energy when it's you have this excess hours. Uh, but I think. A good solution is increased flexibility, even on the consumer side, because then you can absorb more of the surplus wind power. And then the, it's a development with the local energy systems and the, with the new PV power plants and the fast charging of the electric cars that can be challenging. And finally, we still have this as a challenge, the coldest winter day. We will need uh, electricity still. Yeah. <laughs> and right now I'm project leader of uh, one of the sector strategies, and these are uh, like governmental assignments to Energy uh, to develop five different sector strategies uh, for energy efficiency or uh, like resource efficient energy use. And they are uh, aiming on four different energy and climate targets and will try to bring together the actors that are relevant. So the f five sectors are fossil-free transport, world-class world production, future trade and consumption, resource-efficient buildings, and robust and flexible energy system. And I'm the in the that the robust and flexible energy system. So we we are going on with this project for the full year right now, uh, but if you have any, uh, we, we are looking for collaboration with both uh, ac academia and industry in this sector strategies. And we are using like the staircase progress method in order to, to have like real action in the end. So one common problem is to try to start with the action, but actually you will need first some platforms and dialogue and later on a consensus and based on that you can have collaboration and co-action. So my strategy, we are uh, working on this to find uh, actors who wants to participate, so it will really be a grassroots uh, sector strategy. And then, I, in the finally, I would like just like to give 
an example on how we work on research funding. Uh, so I will just show you an, an example uh, from last year. So we usually work with calls. Then it's a signal for researchers to uh, to hand in the applications. So last year we had this call on 100 million kroner uh, on uh, uh, on wind, solar, and electricity system, and everything between, both in uh, uh, like social science and uh, uh, more technical. Uh, so the idea was to brought to really brought together the common challenges of these areas, uh, and we just put three different research programs together in order to fix this. And I think that scenario studies like for futures can be really good help uh, when conducting this kind of research and innovation calls because uh, you will see what can happen and then everyone can try to to find ideas that can suit maybe one maybe more scenarios and that can be like an eye open opener so i i think we have really really good help from that we have been doing this kind of things and that really strengthens the Swedish Energy Agency as a research financer. So, uh, we have lots, lots of challenges in the future and I hope that you accept the challenges and want to work with us on this. And the future starts today. Thank you. So we can have some questions. And uh, I will turn the sound back on for those of you who are participating by a link. If you have a question or comment, you have to use the microphone, otherwise people on link or people watching the recording won't be able to hear what you're saying afterwards. Yes? yes I'll give you the microphone. Right here. Walker Jonsson, and I'm interested in those resource-efficient buildings. Are you looking into the interconnections between the water system and the energy system? I mean, since the 90s, we've recovered the heat from ventilation there, yes. but we still don't recover any heat from the wastewater. Or at least yes. no requirement. Yeah. I think we, the, the, in my project, we, we have just started one. Do you hear I think it's clipping. Is it clipping? Is it working? No. Nope. No. Now it's work. Maybe some uh, some of the ones on the link. They may, maybe should have the microphone off until. Yeah. Because I think it clips. Why don't you turn off your microphone? <coughs> yeah, I can use this maybe instead. Yeah. 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 Question was to, to link the, to link the water and the and the energy system tightly together, and I think we have one research program called Thermo, uh, where we have lots of different research activities on linking both. The, but then it's mainly the heat system and the power, the electricity system. But in Uppsala, they are going to build thirty-three thousand more uh, like living space uh, for, for people to live in the south part of mm. in Bergsbrunna and uh, they are trying there really to interconnect the different systems more so that's a recommendation to look with them yes since the hand mic doesn't work, I will repeat the questions you ask. So just wave your hand and I will do my best to repeat what you have 
to take the chance to say also to uh, introduce uh, Tobias here. He's not just somebody coming from Energimyndigheten. No. He's also our former student who studied here at the Energy Systems Engineering Program that we have together with Uppsala University. Uh, so I wanted to take the chance to ask you now with your work experiences and especially this with the scenarios, do you have any recommendations for us for education of the future students? Yeah, actually, for me, the, the program, the energy systems program, was a perfect start for the work at the Swiss Energy Agency. And some people say that well, the education is only to, to just come into the business or, or companies. But for me, I have been using lots of the knowledge yeah, but it's a good idea to focus on some areas, and I tried to focus on like renewable energy and renewable electricity mainly. So in that way, you you have a good ground. But yeah, I think you are do, doing very good. So I have no recommendations. <laughs> Uh, quite another question. Uh, you mentioned that we have uh, electricity limitations here in Uppsala due to the regional network. And I think it's Vattenfall who, who has that regional network, isn't it? And they are just built, or they are about, they are building a new waste incinerator. And as far as I'm, I think I know, the the furnace is prepared for producing electrical power, but they are this, or at least a few years ago they weren't going to install in any turbine. Do you know if they are, have changed their mind? I mean that would be perfect to have electricity production inside of Uppsala mm -hmm. because then yeah. we could support more activities in Uppsala. Yeah, I agree, and it's it's Vattenfall that owns the regional net grid. But actually, the limitation here is on the transmission grid. So it's about at uh, Jävle or somewhere. So uh, Vattenfall is not allowed to increase uh, power anymore. But I also know that they have spared a place for the uh, electrical. The turbine? turbine in the plant. Well, uh, why don't they build it? <laughs> I, I don't know. But right now it's a very, like, a really exciting project going on called Coordinate. And it's the first, one of the first flexibility markets uh, that's really going on uh, in a large. Yeah, on, uh, on for real, not like a pilot. So it has been going on for this winter. And I saw some numbers that it has already been used a couple of times to to fix the limits. Uh, two questions. Uh, one, the first one is about using the scenario technology and doing it as a one-off, as you did now, and, and how to follow up on a methodology basis, would you now like to do this in five years or 10 years, or, or would that just be a waste of time? That's one question. The other question is, um, what role would, would um, hydrogen storage play in your, in your uh, new work? Uh, in Gotland, we're looking for a new, a new ways of, of storing the energy yeah. to balance it over time. And hydrogen could be that, but it could also be used for, for transport, of course. So, do the role of hydrogen in your view? Yeah. So, the first question on how to follow up the work, and it, it's actually, I'm really interested to to do a fo follow up, but it's uh, up to the uh, management board of the Swedish Energy Agency. I think that owns this report. So, right now, it's no no activity going on to follow up on, on 
this. On the other one, about hydrogen, I also agree with you. And I'm, if you have a project on Gotland, I, um, I can talk with you afterwards to see if we can find some interesting thing. Because I think maybe 15 years ago, there was lots of hype around the hydrogen. But now we see it like a real need for hydrogen in the energy system. Yeah, so I think that is changing the <coughs> ground a little, so it's more interesting than before. Uh, is there anyone who are with us on link who want to pose a question? You have a window of opportunity starting now. No. Okay. Anyone else in the room who have a question? Okay, I have a question. I'll use this one since I'm standing here. I, in, uh, in other countries, uh, such as uh, the UK, I, there is a government office specializing in foresight. Mm. I that works on a number of different sectors, but also with sector overarching foresight activities, both looking at like normative features, which should happen and what could happen. Uh, in Sweden, the work of uh, foresight is, however, carried out at the sector authorities, like the Swedish Energy Agency or the Swedish Boverket, uh, etc. I. Could you reflect a bit about the like the pros of the Swedish model in relation to the UK model that the foresight takes place at the state agencies? It was a tough <laughs> question, but I, for, for me it was very valuable to, to have it close to the energy immediate because we are dealing with this question from, from our every day-to-day -day basis and then it's it's going automatically into the uh, to what we do but uh, I think Sweden was actually one of the first to to have these kind of foresight agencies that's only working on foresight side so I think that is also good so maybe not just either one but both is good more foresight yeah <laughs> <laughs> and uh, with that, uh, it's time to close this lunch lecture. So, can I ask you for a big hand for Tobias? <laughs>